Good morning, everyone, and happy Monday. Welcome to week three of my weekly crypto watch list. Um, we have a lot of stuff to cover this week, and thank you so much um, to you guys in the clinic for, for leaving a bunch of suggestions of charts that I should go through. Actually, last week, uh, this was a beneficial exercise, I believe, for all parties as you know, you guys got um, got somewhat of a look into how I trade the coins uh, mentioned, and I actually found some great setups in the watch list myself, and we'll go over that. Namely, Sushi was a coin that I talked about last week in the watch list. Really strong trade on Sushi. I caught uh, FSX for a couple bounces. Uh, the TWT setup that I talked about last week is still valid. I'll go over that again. And we did get the Bitcoin push up from last week, I believe. So, um, starting out, actually, I just want to say uh, for those of you guys that are not for those of you guys that are not in the clinic, uh, be sure to check that out. That's my Discord. It's completely open, completely free, public to anyone. The, the link will be in the description box below. So check that out, and as well as my Twitter. That's where you can follow uh, live updates of the trades that I take. You know, if I if I post something uh, in Discord or whatever like that, if I talk about it on the watch list here on YouTube, you can catch live updates of any sort of uh, audibles or or changes or, or profit taking or whatnot that I see. Uh, you'll catch that on Twitter. And then last but not least, uh, if you guys are looking for a cool place to trade, check out Bybit. Bybit is one of the places that has uh, very, very liquid perps for the altcoins that people want to trade right now, namely FXS. That's that hasn't been listed. I believe Bybit had that well below, well before uh, Binance listed it. Uh, TWT, for example, you can trade that. There's a bunch of coins that you can't trade elsewhere that you can find on Bybit. So if you guys are looking for a place uh, to trade crypto, check out the the link in the description box below. That'll give you um, that'll give you discount on spot fees as well as sign up bonuses. So check out the link for Bybit in the description box below. Make sure you sign up using the reference link. All right, guys, let's get into the video. So as always, the context is going to be using ES and DXY. So where were we last week? We were talking about this same meme line. Uh, was it going to break or not? So we did get a pullback last week, um, midweek, I believe, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? Rejected off the meme line again. I talked about how last week we had our first daily close over this meme line. And, and well, uh, trap some people, trap some buy, uh, breakout traders. We found support at this very, very clean, um, cr clean level that we've been working with. Even if I pull this out all the way, you guys can just see. Um, you know, I don't even need to pull it out. You guys can see very clearly that we've been working with this same thirty-nine hundred dollar level for uh, seven months. You know, May of last year, May June of last year, seven eight months, right? And we're finding support there once again, which also coinc coincidentally is the mid range between between two very key levels, our our um, August 2022 swing high and then sort of our 35K floor, which coincides with the top of these uh, the top of this demand block right here on the weekly. Right. So. Very bullish signs for ES. My bias uh, for now, I don't know why I have 30, I don't know why I have that marked out, but my bias for now is continued upwards. I think you go all the way to uh, range high. If I'm looking at this as a range, I'm looking at this as mid range. I think you do tag range high. There is a weekly SR, I'm sorry, monthly SR level that we've been rejecting. Um, that's kind of defined the last 12 months of trading on ES. Multiple efforts to hold it as support, resistance, back test, re resistance. So we're going to tag 4100 just a matter of time may even happen today or tomorrow um, but upwards of that I believe that you know this meme line needs to go and we're going to test range highs we're probably going to swing fail range highs to be honest we'll probably make a attempted breakout probably come back in all the way back into into this $3,900 level we'll see how that goes one step at a time but short form my bias is still up so we're going to be looking for upside targets on our altcoins and we're biased to buy the dip until proven otherwise Okay, uh, DXY, not much to say here, still continues to look like shit every single time that we say, hey, this is the level, this is the level, this is the level to look for support, it just continues to break down further and further and further and further, you know, how much lower can it get, um, it could come all the way down to $100, which we discussed last week as well, right, so take out this low right here, if we're not finding demand at this low, um, come all the way down to 100 ultimately what we need to see is a market structure break, this is just a grind down, uh, a grind down of selling, 
or, or negative or uh, pressure on DXY, I would say until you flip this high at 105, we're not going to really be in a, in a bullish structure on DXY. So you would have to do something like this. You know, let's say we put in, um, let's say we put in a breaker down here, like uh, something like this, right? Let's say this is, these are our highs and we come down uh, test the $100 level breakthrough, holding this as support. Yeah, well, there's your bullish structure. That's going to be very risk off for risk assets, right? You're going to have to be, you're going to see a lot of selling pressure and risk assets when that occurs. But ultimately, I don't think, um, I don't think, you know, this is going to go on another crazy bull run until like this 105 wick is taken out. And we find buyers above 105. That's going to be a tall task, probably multiple months for that to occur, but uh, like always, I say DXY has not been something I've been very successful at charting. Uh, just full honestly, full honesty, right? I, I thought you know 105, 106 is going to hold. A lot of other smart people thought that as well. There's a very clean SR level here that I thought was going to hold. I saw bullish divergence that ultimately failed to break out. We we put in a lower low immediately afterwards. So DXY is a complicated one, but when we use the context of ES, DXY, Bitcoin all together, we can get a better picture. All right, that's enough context for now. Let's go into Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is trading above, or actually last week we talked about on the daily, Bitcoin was being rejected by the daily 200 EMA. Right, we've broken above that. We've cleared this this wick. This was my bias that I think to, uh, 228 was going to get taken out. We took 228 out. We're seemingly consolidating above previous range high. So if you ignore, let's put on the replay tool. We just go back from here. This is kind of how I was working with and trading Bitcoin uh, better part of uh, the second half of last year. This is the context that I was trading Bitcoin in. I was looking at this as like a deviation above. The support was not very, very well held. I'm looking at this as an SFP of this level, SFP of this level. Not very strong price action, right? Ultimately, you can see how, how quickly we sold off there. So the 22.8 level is very significant for me. And let's get rid of, uh, let's get rid of this here. And what else do I want to talk about? There's one important structure on the weekly that I want to mention is that to me, the way that I trade my system, uh, price action heavy, range bound heavy, right? To me, this looks like it's potentially, I'm going to have to, actually, let's, uh, let's pull up. I think I have it on the index. To me, this looks like a break in market structure on a weekly time frame. Uh, this looks pretty bullish to me, and I don't want to get overly excited, but the way I see it, this is your high, this is a low, this is a high, this is a lower low, lower high, lower low, this is a higher high. So on the weekly, I think that this reminds me of, and I wasn't trading Bitcoin in 2019, but structurally speaking, I could see a case, um, a lot of people are making the case, myself included, that this is a weekly market structure break, that we've we've traded above a prior swing high on the weekly. And now all that, the, the, all the what matters going forward is, are we going to hold this breaker as support? Are bulls going to come in? Let's say we go, and, and what I believe that's going to happen, spoiler alert, I think we're going to get rejected by the 200 week on the underside. And I think we're going to come down to this breaker. And when this occurs, this is basically the gut check. This is the test that says, are we going to continue being bullish for the rest of this year or maybe the first half of this year or the rest of this quarter, whatever it may be, are we going to defend this breaker? And, and that's going to be very important to me. And what I think, I think it, I'm, I'm biased to say yes for now, but I think the shakeout's going to get really ugly and I think you're going to take out some lows that people are not expecting. <clears throat> Let's talk about those now. This for me, this wick right here, um, was that 20,243 on the index? Uh, there's another low right here. So, you know, relatively equal lows. I think that's the liquidity that Bitcoin is going to source. Probably rejects 2,400, the underside test of the 200 week moving average, and then comes all the way down and probably takes this, this 22.2 liquidity, which is going to be inside of our breaker that we need to defend. And we're going to see how price action develops from there. That's kind of me thinking four moves ahead of time, you know, not guaranteed that any of this plays out. I'm just kind of making game plans. If then scenarios of, okay, if we get rejected here, how far low could we go? Um, if we defend this price, are we still in bullish market structure? So that's the kind of the context that I'm using for Bitcoin. But for me, I'm pretty bullish on this. I didn't expect Bitcoin to be this crazy, this fast, 
But alas, you know, we have to enjoy the upside volatility while we have it and, and maintain skepticism and rationality. Make sure you guys are taking profits. Make sure you guys are uh, have a plan for your spot bags. Um, I think, you know, for me personally, I may, I've, I accumulated a lot in here. I may take some profits at 24 um, but not a lot, maybe just 25% of my spot. Um, I'm really not keen on, on selling too much spot. This is a long-term investment for me, but to, to, to sort of risk off and pay myself, I may, I may, uh, predictively kind of sell this 2400 or $24,000 level on, on Bitcoin spot. Ethereum's more of the same. I covered Ethereum last week, uh, giving you guys my idea that, you know, Ethereum's in a bullish market structure. I told you that, you know, if you go back and watch, everything's timestamped, by the way. If you guys ever want references to last week, you don't have to see, uh, sift through the entire video. Just look in the description and, and, and find the, the ticker that I mentioned. So for Ethereum, I was talking about how, you know, one one move up is not going to define a top, right? It's going to have multiple waves before we put in a top, and that's kind of what we're doing here in Ethereum. Um, for me, again, on the high time, high, high time frame, let's pull up the ETH index. Um, this level, right, the same, the same weekly close all-time high has been the most significant level in Ethereum's chart, right? Weekly close all-time high. As we entered the bull market in 2020, 2021, we got rejected from this level, put in a 30% correction off that level, ultimately traded above it crashed into it, held it as support and launched us to 4K, right? And if you look locally in the last six, eight months, it's really defined all of us. It's it's been a it's been a breaker here, right? A demand a demand block, sorry, not, not a breaker, a demand block, support, uh capped this this mental disease range, um, has been the swing high off the FTX collapse, put it in a high over here. We've traded above it. I think whenever Ethereum comes back to you know 1300 you just bite the bullet uh that's what i'm gonna do because you know i'm taking profits on this rally i'm expecting a pullback is gonna come eventually when that comes i'm gonna be loading ethereum um if we get you know the three digit move so be it i'll be underwater on the first of the first of my buys i actually played this leg really really well so i have extra cash and i'll just write it off as you know um it's a trade or whatever, whatnot, I'm going to start accumulating and defending uh, 1300 because that's what the chart's telling me. That's what traders are telling me. Okay, guys, 12 minutes into the video. Let's get into some of these altcoins. Um, Litecoin, I always want to talk about it. No one really cares about it, but I, I think it's one of the bull most bullish high time frame charts in crypto. I have a whole dedicated video on Litecoin, so that's why I'm not going to go um, too, too much in detail with Litecoin. But I think, let's say, 94 rejects and we get a big, massive, nasty pullback into 74. That is, once again, going to be the place that I bid and I bid heavy, confluent with the daily 100, daily 200 EMAs. That's where I want to bid. That's where I want to bid. It's really strong. Watch the Litecoin video if you guys are interested in that. TWT, again, this is this is you know a high time frame picture that I really, really enjoy. You have multiple months of rejection around this 130 level, a big breakthrough, a crash back into the level. You're holding it as support on the weekly for one, two, three, four, five, six weeks of holding this as support. I'm pretty bullish on this on a high time frame perspective. If we look at it in a little bit of a lower time frame, you're basically getting rejected by, you're constantly getting rejected by the daily 100 you're holding the daily 200 as support the daily 200 is being confluent support of that of that weekly level that i talk about this green box but we're just getting nasty rejections off the daily 100 and which is also confluent with the h4 200 ema so you have two very significant moving averages above you that we need to clear in order for this to have clear skies but once it does 175 is my target and then probably this consolidation cluster around 215. I think TWT is going to surprise some people. Um, I just don't know when it's going to break out. It keeps getting rejected. I've been very patient, but uh, that is TWD, TWT for me. Uh, sushi is one of the things I talked about last week on the watch list. Uh, I wanted to bid the H4 200 EMA. We got that test. I, I packed my bags around 116. I didn't get fully filled. I had more orders at 111, 112. I didn't get filled on all of those. Right. Uh, I didn't get filled in all of those, but um, good reaction. Right. Good reaction. Uh, I've taken some profits at this mid range level, mid range of this. Uh, basically, I don't know. Uh, what is this since May? Yeah, the same seven, eight month range. I've taken profits at mid range. I've taken profits off the impulse of the move. I'm looking for higher. Pepe's doing a great job fishing profits for me. Um, 
the rejection here is probably going to be the 200 EMA. That's where I want to take profits is on this 200 EMA, which is around 150, 148. That's going to be the top for me uh, on this sushi trade. And then from then we'll, we'll set up something else. But a, a little bit of compounding that I'm looking at is that if uh, if we get rejected right here at this mid range, where which is where I took some profits, and we take this wick and give ourselves a, a bullish reaction off of it, I'm gonna try to take a long here around 126, 128, something like that. Maybe even wait for some uh, low time frame market structure break, bullish price action to develop, take a long somewhere in the 130s again, look for that same target around 148, just as listed right here. This liquidity is what I'm looking for. It may even take this other one at 126, but that's my way of compounding sushi at the very moment. Um, I don't believe that anyone talked about OP, but OP has been hot, man. Um, we talked about OP last week on the watch list. Um, the level that we spoke about is the is this very clean daily, weekly SR level around 130. Uh, what did I mention in that last video on OP is that this is the dream. If you get 130, you have to bid. And I also said that we're probably not gonna get 130. You're gonna get a shallower pullback because there's so much demand here. The example that I was using was this breakout where you did get that perfect retest, but I didn't expect it to happen this time. And lo and behold, we didn't get it this time. We got another push up higher. On this chart, it's at an all time high. I don't think this is the complete, um, let's Let's see if we can find more data on OP. Oh, it might be an all-time high. I'm not sure, guys. I'm not sure if this is an all-time high. For me on OP, this is not a place that I'm looking to bid. Let's say this is um, let's say this is range high. This is range low. If we take a range somewhere in here, probably a pullback to mid-range, wherever that ends up being. Okay, look how funny. It's the same. It's the same level. It's that same 136 level. So yeah, I don't know if we're going to get a pullback all the way back to range mid. That would be super cool though um, to be able to accumulate or buy OP around 130. Maybe we re revisit this demand right here around 160. That'll be a good place to bid. But look at these wicks. Yeah, look at how these daily wicks are rejecting this level right here. I think if you're looking for some, some downside protection, some hedges to some longs that you have, OP might be a good one where, you know, the closest you the closer you can get to shorting 230 the better and then daily closes above 230 are your are your invalidation to get out if you're still bullish on op at this point um i'm not really going to cover low time frame but um low time frame i guess you could say let's see the four hour trend yeah you could bid this you could say hey look we're, we're defending the low the the four hour trend there's been shakeouts the entire way but let's say you break under the H4, right? We reclaim it. The reclaiming of the H4 after a breakdown could be uh, your way to get back into OP, maybe take profits at range high, look for the breakout, get rejected by the breakout. You can close your longs. Something like that on OP. All right, GMX. GMX is um, one of the ones, no one really suggested this one. It's just something that I'm looking at. Um, no one requested this, I mean. GMX has been strong. It has had a narrative. It is a DEX coin. I think it's got some Ponzi nomics, some pumpamentals in here. It's holding its daily, ten, daily trend pretty strongly. Let's get rid of these. Uh, let's keep the H4, right? Which is confluent with a breaker. So you have this point of breakdown, right? Which was confluent with prior highs. I think there's a more complete chart on GMX as well. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's, let's redraw some uh, SRs here. So let's just say something like that. That's pretty clean, right? Um, so you're flipping this point of breakdown. You've reclaimed the H4 200 EMA. You found buyers. You've probably, let's see, the local point of breakdown. That's right here, right? So we're defending this breaker as well. Yeah, GMX looks bullish. I want a piece of this. I actually looked at it this morning off the, the quick Bitcoin sell-off. I wasn't quick enough to get back in. It's it's busting a lot higher. I wouldn't be su surprised if we put a new all-time highs. I think 60... 60 is right for the taping. Taking this is the right uh, this is the right kind of market for all time highs to be set, especially for bear market coins. This is a bear market coin. We're gonna look back on this one day, and, and we're gonna say, wow, that whole thing was accumulation. That entire thing was accumulation, and, and GMX is trading at two three hundred dollars. I would not be surprised if we came back to this uh, way back then. 
uh, in the future and we come back to this and, and we look at it and we say, yeah, that whole thing was accumulation. So G, GMX is something I'm bullish on. Uh, I may just bite the bullet and buy a little bit of spot here. Uh, dream scenario would be another market-wide correction if I can buy around 46 or, or something confluent with the daily moving averages. That would be beautiful. Something that I'm really bullish on. I'm going to be looking for entries on this. I'll update this on my Twitter and Discord. As I see fit. Okay, moving on. Metis is a coin that I, I talked about last week. It did the exact same thing that I talked about. I said that, you know, it's probably going to range between the the daily 100. Let's put up the daily daily 100 and the H4 200 EMA. And then once it clears that, we're going to get the uh, the daily 200. Go back and watch Metis last week. I covered it exactly. I was too slow. Uh, actually, wasn't slow. I just wasn't paying attention. If I'm going to be completely honest, I was not paying attention to Metis when it tagged the daily two or when the tag the h4 200 ema right here confluent with prior range highs i really wanted to bid this and i just you know brain was elsewhere did not get it so now how am i going to get into a long because i want a position in this so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to bite the bullet and probably just buy the top here at, at 222 maybe if i'm lucky i can get i'm going to put bids all the way down to the um daily 100 which is coming in at 21.4 so i'm going to bid 21.4 and then i'm probably going to buy a little bit of spot at this top and my target's going to be all the way up here at 30 dollars confluent with the pre ftx collapse top and confluent with the t daily 200 ema i think you're going to get a very fast fill there's a lot of people selling here right these are your sellers. That's it. This is your last line of defense, in my opinion. This is the last line of defense for Metis. You break out over whatever this is, $23. I think you're going to get a very fast move to 30 And then everyone will be saying, oh, yeah, L2 narrative, this narrative, et cetera, narrative. It doesn't matter what they're going to say. Um, it's all in the chart for me. 23 is an extremely clean level. And I think I'm just going to buy a bag right after this video, right after I finish recording. That's Metis for me. Look at last week's video. I talked about this correction, did not bid into it. Okay, FTM. Ooh, FTM is strong. Okay, so FTM, I talked about last week getting rejected by the daily 200, right? It got rejected. We traded above it. We're holding, we got demand above it and we're pushing higher. Um, basically drawn, you know, this, this, this drawing from last week's watch list is still pretty uh pretty relevant right so i wanted the pullback really deep into here it, it didn't give you that pullback just like we talked about an op there's a lot of demand for ftm some andre developer i'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce his last name is back is is developing on ftm ftm's bullish again whatever yada yada the chart looks good um it's gonna probably continue finding resistance right here on 40 cents 44 i'd say is going to be your range high top then this whole thing becomes a range right then i'm going to start playing this like a range so let's say we get rejected right i'm, I'm not gonna I, I don't have anything uh i don't have any actionable signals in my system to be able to comfortably buy at 39 40 cents in fact what i would end up doing is probably looking for shorts on this and saying this is what probably one of the coins just like op um, if we're going to lead into a corrective market you know let's say this is your range high range low let's put in a mid range here somewhere um, that's relatively oh i'm on log disgusting uh, that's relatively clean right there apologize I probably had log for the last three charts but you know the levels stay the same the levels stay the same it's only the fibonacci 50 percent level that moves when i take it in and off log so uh go back and double check that if if it uh if it messes you guys up or not i don't think it did um okay anyways so you found demand at at mid-range um we may move all the way to all time or not all time highs range highs 46 um there's no actionable signal for me if you're in longs i would say de-risk start tp'ing uh look for momentum see the, the the momentum indicators that i use are the h4 trend right so same kind of situation here yeah uh, you lose the h4 trend you get a little bit worried you say okay maybe a nastier correction is coming maybe a correction for me how i would trade is if i lose the h4 i'm looking for the h4 200 ema to protect me this got back above it when you get back above it you can get back into your longs you're holding the h4 support here you're holding the h4 support here so again look at for look for range high on ftm 44 46 something like that look to maybe de-risk there watch the h4 trends um 
yeah, that's pretty much it for FTM. I'm, I I want to bid anytime we get a nasty correction all the way down to the H4200 EMA. Maybe, maybe mid-range for me. But other than that, I may look to fade uh, range highs. Maybe it pushes all the way to this wick, guys. Maybe it pushes all the way to the wick, which is around 53 cents. We're going to have to see how it goes. FTM for me is not something that I can actionably long uh, the way that it is. It's very strong. If you guys really want to long this, what I would say again, just the last time before we move on, probably probably bid the H4 trends, you know, these corrections into the H4 trend, make your invalidation loss of the H4 trend. You can use confluent factors such as price action, use your SR levels, right? You know, so like right here, you could say, uh, let's let's give you an example here. So for for this one, you could say, hey, this is prior resistance. Uh, we broke above resistance. We broke above. We made a breaker, right? We broke above this. We're holding this as support. Confluent SR and confluent with the H4 trend. That could be a place to long. Losing both of them, strong invalidations. Play something like that if you're looking to play strength. If you're looking to buy the top here on, on FTM. Okay, perp perp has a very clean weekly level too, I believe. And Crypto McKenna, you are a massive LARP. I'm not taking this tweet off here. Um, if, if you see this video in the future, yeah, you just, just know that you have been a constant source of comedy for me the last, I don't know, <laughs> eight months of calling bottoms across the market. Get out of here. Okay, so perp for me, uh, very clean level at, at around 49.50. I want to see this flipped. We have, a, I think, the same exact play of the... Daily 100, daily 200, yeah. So you're getting rejected by the daily 100. You're finding support at the H, uh, H4 200 EMA. This may continue compressing. Um, perp may continue doing this, doing this, compressing in here. But when you break out, you know, when you break out and you find buyers to defend 50, I think you get that gap fill all the way up here. Maybe, maybe crazy, maybe $1. This this kind of stuff, some stuff that, you know, requires a 2x, either requires a narrative or enough time in a bullish market to see these things out. For now, though, uh, seeing seeing this chart, it looks like it started to flip into a bullish market structure. From being in a very, very bearish market structure for a very long time, I think when you flip 50, when you flip the daily 100 moving average, confluent with this SR level, and you find buyers above 50, I think you start making big, big moves. I picked up a small long on, on, on perp here around 50 right around 50 cents. I will add all the way down to 44. If we lose the H4 200 EMA, I'll cut it. But yeah, that's a pretty big accumulation zone. I understand that. This is one of the ones that I would recommend doing a uh, spot for or very low leverage. Do not, do not shake yourselves out on something with this high of a risk to reward, something so favorable for longs. Don't shake yourself out with high leverage. Go low leverage, two, three X, something like that, or spot for something like this, because the upside is it, upside's ginormous. Um, that's 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 what that's what my take on perp is. I think you flip this SR level, flip the daily 100, looks good for higher prices. APT, APT was one of the coins on my weekly watch list last week that I was bearish on. I was looking at this level, I was looking at this daily level, and I was saying this is the place for bears to defend, and this is the place to look for shorts. And guess what? I did take a short. I actually shorted this and successfully, um, but I missed so much upside, you know. So what I did is I was looking at this um, confluent with the H4 trend. Right. So I was looking at this red line right here, uh, whatever this may be, 7.9. And I was seeing price on the H4 candles defend, 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 defend and get rejected by this green uh, 820 level, 817 level on the high time frame daily chart. And I was seeing it get rejected on the dailies and then continue to be defended on the H4. When we started losing this level, this candle right here into this H4 trend, I started being predictive. I go, okay, we're, we've, we've the H4 trend has carried us from the bottom. We're now starting to crowd it. We've lost this uh, H4 support level. And we're being rejected on the high time frame basis of the daily, right? So for me, I took a very tight, um, tight uh, short position here. So I got in on this back test and then I traded it to liquidity, right? Right at this liquidity, when we got a, we got a big reaction off that, I was watching like in the one minute charts. Let's see if we can find this. Where are we, where are we? Right, so we got a big reaction on the one minute chart and I was like, okay, that's enough for me, I'm gonna close out. So I closed out right in there. 
I never got any longs GGs to you guys if you took longs on here. And I'm sorry if I made you bearish on APT. I just don't know the narrative of why this coin is so strong. Other than, hey, maybe everyone's shorting here. Maybe everyone's building shorts here. Let's just blow them out. That could be another thing too. Crypto is a PVP market, especially when there's no new money coming in. So yeah, that's going to be it for APT for me. I don't really want to suggest you to buy this anymore. I don't know the narrative. This is something that I don't feel comfortable giving signals on to be honest because i know nothing about apt the extent of my knowledge on apt is that it has something to do with facebook or something to do with meta that's it so if you're bullish on apt this is one where maybe you wait for this to come all the way down and, and buy something back here at eight dollars um, if you want to buy it up here that's on you. That's on you. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but if you want to see how I took this APT trade, go on my Twitter. It's it's documented in real time. I gave the setup. I, I gave the the target and I gave the, the execution and everything like that. So go ahead and review that. It's also in a thread in, in Discord. If you go in the Discord, you look at the trading channel, there's a bunch of threads. Go to the APT thread and you'll see in real time how I was bearish on this, how I took the short, etc. Okay. Coming on to LDO. LDO. All right. This is... This is pretty incredible, right? Um, what did we get? We got the H4 200 EMA tap. Well, we didn't get the H4 200 EMA, which would have been a perfect, perfect long. Uh, again, just like a bunch of other markets like OP and whatever, we're front running, we're maintaining momentum. We're, we're riding probably the H4 trend. Let's see. So what do you do here? What do you do here? Um, on the H4 trend, if you're continuing to see rejections on the underside, you're continuing to see this, you might be bearish. You might take a short in here. Your short invalidation is going to be when you break above it. When you break above the H4 trend, start to get worried. Um, if you're looking for longs in this, again, reclaiming the H4 may be an uh, actionable signal. When you trade above it, you, you, you hold the H4 as support. These are actionable long signals for me in a trending market. Watch the H4 trends. It's going to be repeated, guys. I'm going to re keep repeating the same, the same thing on every coin. It may get repetitive for, the, for those of you that watch this entire video, but I can't do anything more than trade my system and trade what my system tells me and take longs based on my system and, and get invalidated based on my system. That's how I have to trade. I can't keep, you know, an eye open to every single way that everyone else trades. Other people are going to catch longs better than me. Other people are going to catch shorts better than me. I'm going to catch longs better than other people. That's just the way the name of the game works. You trade your PL, you trade to make sure that you're making money, your risk is managed, and, and you're capturing upside. Whatever system that may be, that's the system you got to stick with. Okay, so yeah, coming back to this, what I wanted, again, I want a clear tap of 160. I'm not getting it because the market's strong. The upside target for Lido is going to be new all-time highs. Um, there's really nothing else to say. Like This is a very strong structure. This is your breakout. This is your consolidation. Uh, you break out of this consolidation, the upside target is going to be new all-time highs. Now, how could you make a short, um, um, a short thesis on this? This is your swing high, right? If you get rejected by this high at 264, you could say, okay, I'm going to short this level at 264 and my invalidation is going to be H4 closes above it. If the H4 starts closing above it, I'll get out. If it, again, if it, if it, it baits you and it gets out and you, and you, and you drop back in, well, now what you've got is a big supply zone. You got a big supply zone above a swing high, right? And then you could look for this. You could say, okay, if it trades back into here, I'm going to short again. My invalidation is going to be, again, acceptance above these highs. I'll look to trade it, you know, step by step, maybe first mid-range, first this liquidity cluster, and then maybe all the way to the, uh, all the way to that one 60 clean SR level, maybe the H4 200 EMA creeps all the way up to mid-range, right? In the, in the same amount of time by, uh, later this month, right? These are actionable short signals that you could trade on, on, on LDO if you're looking at this from a range-bound perspective and you're bearish on the market and you're looking for downside protection. But for me, you really, you know, you get tempted to say, this is pumped so much. This is the coin that I'm going to short, you know, case in point, Aptos last week. But strong coins oftentimes continue to be strong because when you have those resets, when Bitcoin gives you a 2-3% flush on liquidity and, and rids some late longs, everyone goes to bid the strong coins and the strong coins continue to put in higher highs. So for me, I, I, I don't have a position in LDO anymore. 
I rode it pretty strong on this leg. Um, I don't have a position in LDO anymore. Um, the way I want to get back in is on a very high time frame pullback. Uh, it's proven itself as a market winner. People want to keep trading this. As far as shorts goes, this is how I would play it. It's sort of a range bound perspective up here and say, okay, if this is an SFP of the high, this is how I'm going to confirm it. Be very sharp and quick on your invalidations. Don't get caught martingaling underwater. Don't keep adding to bad short positions and being like rationalizing and saying, oh, I'm longing this coin, so I'm shorting this other coin. I'm, I'm delta neutral. I'm, I'm managing my risk. Don't do that. You know, don't martingale underwater shorts in an uptrend market. Look for things to be lost. Look for the H4 trend to be lost. Look for very significant market structure breaks. So if, if the market's doing this, higher highs, higher lows, look for a lower low to be put in maybe short the the back test right the the lower high and then look for lower lows if 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 it if it trades back above here that's your invalidation but then again if you do something like this your risk reward is pretty good right if you're shorting something like this and, and your risk is this and your reward is that you're still finding a good rr in in a bullish market after market structure shift market structure break all right that's enough about ldo uh fsx FSX is actually a long position that I'm in right now. Um, high time frame is what we want to discuss on this one. We don't want to get shaken out of the high time frame thesis. The high time frame thesis, very, very simple. Ranged for multiple months, broke out of the range. Don't fade a range breakout. Ranged for multiple, multiple months, broke out of the range, broke out of the daily 100, I think right? Broke out of the daily 100, the daily 200, right? It's above both of them. So for me, if all of these moving indicators converge, right? And come all the way up to 830 and we get a massive correction back in 830 and this is prior range high and we get all of these confluence of moving indicators, you have to bid there and your target's going to be all the way up here at 1617. That's the high time frame trade that I'm going to be looking to reload on. I captured a big, big move in here from uh, $6 up to nine or something like that. 50% move on perps, very, very successful trade for me. Uh, I've wound down my risk significantly on, on FSX, and I'm actually in a very small long, and I can go over that now just for the sake of this video. So for me, what I was looking at um, on FSX is just a liquidity sweep, right? These are these are prior highs. We traded above the highs. We found support. We pushed higher. We're trading all the way back into that same level. There's a very, very clean liquidity level right here. We take the liquidity, boom, boom move back up, right? So I had two ways to get into this trade this morning, two ways. Trade number one, take the liquidity and, and make your invalidation. Okay, if we take the liquidity and we keep losing this level, like if we start trading and accepting below the gray box, okay, I'm invalidated, I'm out. The second way is if we don't take liquidity, but we break structure, right? We trade down in here, we maybe we leave equal lows, we bust back up and we break structure. So on, on a 15 minute chart, you've broken structure, you've made uh, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, all the way down. Now you make a higher high on, on the 15 minute chart, right? So now what I want to see is this defended. I want to see the breaker defended. I want to see buyers come in around 1030. Uh, like I said, I'm in from about eight, nine, 980, I believe. It's, it's posted somewhere in Discord. Go ahead and check it out in Discord. Um, I want to see 1030 uh, defended, and then my target is going to be 1150. I want to see fresh highs on, on FSX, F, F, X, S. I, I don't know. I always get tongue twisted saying that. Whatever. You guys know what I mean. Frax, I believe is what it's called. There's a swing high right here uh, that I have marked out. A wick high liquidity, liquidity level right around uh, 1260. So I'm looking for fresh highs. Um, currently on the high time frame chart, you're getting rejected by this 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 daily daily supply, right? I think we clear that. I think once you find demand around 11 and 12, that's when you get the move to 16. They might take a lot of consolidation in here, guys. It might it might not be quick. It may be something like this. Maybe we come down. Maybe we do this. Maybe we do that. I don't know how it's going to play out. One thing at a time. Um, we're in the long right now. We're looking for uh, 1260, the invalidation of this long, again, is going to be acceptance below gray box. I need to see gray defended. I need to see buyers come in here. Pretty, pretty comfortable entry entering below gray. Uh, I think 1260 is next on FXS, and I think it's going to 16 eventually. That's what the high time frame chart tells me. Oh my God, we have so many coins to cover. Solana, 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 Solana. Okay, so what I talk about in Solana, again, like last week, was just the H4 trend. Um, I believe last week we were in here. We were somewhere in here, 
right? And I was saying, look, guys, uh, the H4 trend has held us all the way down, all the way up into the SFP. Like I said, always watch last week's Solana video to get more context. If I don't go back and explain every single detail, you guys can get more context on that. So what is what are we doing? We, we lost the H4. A lot of coins lost the H4. Big shakeout, right? Big shakeout. But we bid some things. We bid sushi, like I mentioned. Uh, we ignored coins that were below the H4 like this. We, we bid some other coins that, that had a very clean high time frame chart. Um, Solana retook the H4, um, has traded above the breaker, the, the point of breakdown, which is this gray box right here that I have highlighted. It's reclaimed its H4. Uh, it's holding it as support. Ultimately, I'm biased to believe that Solana is going to come back to $30 level. That is a psychological level. That's your pre FTX collapse level. Um, and I think that's your daily 200 as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, daily 200 as well. So I think Solana is going to 30 um, if you're in spot, uh, that's where I uh, personally, that's where I'm going to be selling some spot. I did take some spot profits around $22. I'm going to take the rest. Uh, basically, I'll be out half of my Solana position at $30. I would be expecting a rejection there. If we come back down to these levels one day, perfect. I'll reload. If not, so be it. I'll buy back at 30. We'll see what happens. I need to pay myself for this swing of the trade. Um, like a lot of other coins, guys. Daily 100 to daily 200 gap fill. I, I'm biased for higher targets on Solana. Use the H4 trends that I mentioned. Use um, SR flips, breakers. These are the same techniques that I'm going to keep using on every single coin. I'm going to be a broken record, but these are the techniques that I'm going to be using to play momentum. Ultimately, a bigger correction will be the H4 200 EMA. Uh, I don't know when it's going to come. Maybe, maybe a few weeks from now, and then maybe it coincides with some prior demand, and then the H4 comes in here, and that would be a very, very clean long because you could long and say, hey, my invalidation is losing the H4 200 EMA. My invalidation is losing this prior demand block. Uh, we're looking for high RR trades like that. Uh, but you're, if you're in spot Solana, uh, 30. I think 30 is coming. And if you're looking for position right now, you could you know, you know, could take a long right here. You could take a long right here and say, okay, I'm going to bid the H4 trend. Uh, I'm going to bid uh, the H4 trend. And my invalidation is going to be losing the H4 and losing this gray point of breakdown, which was reclaimed. That is what we called a breaker setup. So losing the breaker, losing the H4, that's your invalidation. Your high side target's going to be 30. Ocean has an AI narrative. Ocean looks incredibly clean. I'm having a lot of FOMO on Ocean. I saw it this morning at 32. I saw it. Could have bid it. I didn't bid it. It would have already been a 10% move. Um, as far as high time frame goes, looks very clean. Look at this level that we've built uh, over years, right? So you've got this 30 cent level, right? You've got this 30 cent level. You got rejections below it, right? Let's go on uh, the weekly. 30 cent level, rejection below it. Uh, we've traded above it now. And on lower time frames, like the H4, you're holding it as support. So your SR flipping it on lower time frames. You're obviously going to be holding your H4 trend. You're going to be well above your H4 200 EMA. Um, let's see the 100s and 200s on the daily. Let's see where they're lining up. You're above both of them. So look, the H4 100 and 200 were resistance for a long time. Uh, you actually had actionable signals. There's multiple ways you could have gotten into Ocean using my system. Uh, I've been negligent to the AI coins. I've been trading other things. Um, I've been really, really negligent to the AI coins, but I will look to hopefully get in somehow, some way. Maybe I'm going to use the H4 again. The next correction in the H4, I'll probably look for a position there. Uh, my invalidation is going to be acceptance below, back below 30, 30 cents. I think now that you've cleared 30 cents, I think 30 cents is going to be your support. I think buyers are going to keep coming into defending that. I think every pullback is going to get defended. The high side targets for me on Ocean are probably going to be this supply zone right here. So something like this into, yeah, let's make it really broad for now. Something 39 to 45. Let's just say 45 because it has a lot of strength. Something like that. Let's actually, you know what? I'm not going to be this lazy. Let me put in a little bit more effort. So this is, this is a coin that everyone wants to trade. I'm going to put in a little bit more effort and find cleaner levels. Okay, so yeah, I'd say for now something like that, 43, 43 and a swing high at 45. I think there would be a risk off uh, right around here, 43, 45. Uh, you get a probably a big correction, probably 50% of this move from 30 to 45, probably somewhere back around current prices even, you know, maybe uh, 45 back to 35, you know, something like that, 38. 
Um, that's a big, big, strong pullback opportunity. But if you're in longs right now and you're in comfy longs on ocean, I think taking profits around 40, 42, 45, that's going to be the area. That's that's where you should start looking for warning signs, um, looking for market structure breaks, looking for SFPs, maybe a swing high of 45 something like that. But I think Ocean's a coin. Look at it, it's up 15% today. Like it, it's the in coin, it's the in-demand coin. Uh, people are probably rotating from the LSD narrative coins to the AI coins. Uh, I think there's more upside. I'm going to be looking for entries personally on this one. Like I said, I missed this morning on the H4 tap. I could have gotten in very clearly at, at 32. Your invalidation obviously is going to be close below 30 and your high side target is 40. This may be another coin that I have to bite the bullet and buy the top on. We'll see. I'll update this. Like, like guys, I'm not going to be updating live trades in these in these watch list videos. That's going to be for Twitter and Discord. So check out Twitter and Discord for updates on these coins. Okay, dot dot looks phenomenal too. If you guys look at the comedy of this um, this drawing that I drew out uh, maybe six months ago, I may have drawn this six months ago, saying that hey, when we take these levels down here, when we take this level, this is a good place to buy, and we'll probably consolidate. We'll probably move to nine dollars. The echo bubble target high for me on, on on dot. Maybe we get the echo bubble thesis this year. I think you're going to get to about nineteen, eighteen, nineteen dollars. I think that's one hundred percent in the cards. Flip. Eight dollars. Eight dollars is inevitable. Flip eight dollars. You're gonna get eighteen, nineteen. Um, that's it for dot for me. This is a coin that I don't want to trade, but I want to accumulate some spot on. The way that I'm gonna look to accumulate spot is on the daily breaker. So this is the last swing high before the ultimate low. This is your last swing high right here before the ultimate low. We already see that we found demand there. Um, wherever we push to. Wherever it may be, I don't know if we go all the way to seven, whatever it may be, whenever it comes down and comes back to this $5 level, if, when, you know, let's say uh, five, six, something like this, this is where I'm going to accumulate some spot for the next leg, envisioning a move to $9 and in $18 and $19. I think, I think DOT has just put in a very significant bottom. Look at this consolidation and accumulation before the bull market. We basically traded all the way back in there. Again, guys, I call myself out when I make mistakes. I pat myself on the back when I do smart things. This is one of the things that I may have made a mistake on. Uh, very clean level. I, I drew this out on the chart. Thankfully, someone suggested DOT uh, for this video today so I can remind myself to buy some DOT. Um, but I think it put in a very significant bottom. I think I think dips from here are are worth accumulating. I think the ma majority of this downtrend is possibly over, and I think you enter probably your accumulation on dot now. I'll be looking to accumulate dot on a pullback. Um, ENS. I don't think I have anything strong for ENS here. It's going to be doing the same thing, right? We still have the same breaker setup that we have on a lot of coins right here. This is your swing high. We're defending this, the wick this morning, I believe, or yesterday. Um, yep, right here, $14. So for me, if you're looking to get into ENS right now, it's very simple. Defend 14, look for higher targets. Your higher targets, like with everything else, is going to be the FT, FTX collapse highs and your daily 200. Uh, let's see, is the daily 200 above on this one? No, I think it's more. Okay, so yeah. So ENS has been one that's been consolidating down here for quite some time. So we're going to ignore the daily 200. I think you're getting a little bit of resistance right here at the daily 200. But you're finding support the daily 100. I think you can bid comfortably at $14 and you can aim for this swing high around 18, the pre FTX collapse tops. Same setups on all these coins. All of these setups are basically saying, look, we're going to get back to the FTX collapse top level. That's what I think this entire rally is, is the market's gotten breathing room and we're bidding all these coins back to the pre FTX collapse tops. And that's going to be around $18. I think uh, ENS eventually makes his move to $18. Bidding 14 is not a bad idea. That's actually something. Thing. Now that I'm doing this, see, this is why I'm thankful that you guys suggest these coins is that I can look for setups myself. I think myself, I'm probably going to be bidding 14. Any any move down to 14, I'll probably be buying some ENS and be looking for $18. Okay, Uni, same same setup, right? <laughs> it's it's the same chart. It's it's the same. Corporate wants you to, uh, to identify the difference in these two pictures. They're the same picture, right? So this is this is kind of the same thing. You can look at this as your prior uh prior uh, uh um, swing high right so you have a bounce here into a daily swing high right that's your swing high a big breakdown you broke above it you held it as support you're pushing higher 
This is it. This is your long entry at six dollars. If you got in, congratulations. I think you TP around seven eighty around the, these highs right here. You'll probably make your move all the way there. We're filling in the inefficiency. If we just look at it from an inefficiency standpoint on the daily, the high would be here. The end of the fair. Oh no, actually, this wick took all that out. Maybe it's right here. Okay, well, well we got there right now. Hmm. Okay, so what I would say. Okay, let's look at this a little bit cleaner. Let's let's spend some more time here. Okay. So here's your prior range, right? Here's your here's your high. Uh, we can say this is right around here is your low. This is a deviation of the high, and we're trading back into the high right now. So as far as other coins, higher targets, risk to reward, this may not be the best risk to reward unless there's some Uniswap narrative that I don't know about that's going to help push it higher. But ultimately, I think traders will look to rotate out of Uni and look to rotate into better coins with easier uh, high side targets. So if you're looking for uni longs right here, I don't think your risk to reward is too great if we're using this $720 level as, as our as our um, as our uh, guide. Let's look at some EMAs real quick before we move on. Okay, here, here's the bullish here's the bullish case. Here's the bullish case. This is why I, this is why I use these uh, EMAs in in momentum markets, right? Rejected by the daily 200 rejected by the daily 200 rejected by the daily 200 found support found support at the h4 200 ema found support at the breaker found support at the daily 100 amazing long i wish someone suggested this last week this is one of the strongest long setups in the market this leg right here from the daily 100 to the daily 200 that 10 percent move very high conviction long and look what you're doing now you're you're seemingly flipping the daily to i can't do it on low time frames because it, it, it changes the ma's but you're flipping the daily one the daily 200 into support so that's something we have not seen um yeah, you're getting closes above that. We're hoping this doesn't end up the same way right here, right? But looks pretty clean to me for continued upside. So now how do we get high time frame bullish on, on uni, right? Okay, so I want to see a breaker. I, not a breaker. I want to see a higher high. I want to see a higher high. So this is your high on uni, right? If we if we want to bid right here, I would say you bid 6 61 as close to the daily 200 as possible 661 your invalidation is going to be daily closes below that in which case you look again to defend this area right which is about six dollars um confluent with the other moving indicators that i mentioned you can you can defend this and you can aim for this high at 770 if you're just looking for high time frame trades you could say okay take out Take out this high. Show me that you're extremely strong. Break market structure on the daily. We haven't had a daily higher high in God knows how long, right? So break market structure, take out this high, and then the next pullback, defend it. The next pullback, maybe down to seven. This is where you accumulate a, a lot of uni, maybe maybe spot, right? Because you're saying, okay, we have a significant change in structure, significant change in structure, and you buy a, a shitload of spot right here, and you just ride that, and you don't get shaken from your spot, and you look at this entire thing as accumulation on a uni, and you say that we've got a daily market structure break, and then we're bidding the daily 200, and then you look for higher targets. You look at $9, you look at, at $11. That's your high time frame trade on uni. Thank you to whoever mentioned this one. I'm going to be looking at uni as well. Okay, HTR. I don't know what this coin is. I don't even ha ha half hath hathor 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 i don't know what this coin is i've never heard of it before um i believe one of you guys suggested it last week and i really didn't like the chart i didn't like what i was seeing i didn't know if it has narrative i think you were we were right here we were you know we were right here last week so great move if you got if you were long uh anonymous person if you were long htr um if you were long htr uh congratulations good trade um now um since you suggested two weeks in a row, I'm obviously not gonna not not gonna ignore this two weeks in a row. But let's see. Uh, okay, if this has a narrative I don't know about, it's probably gonna break through this level. It's probably gonna break through this level if it has a narrative that I don't know about. Other other than that, uh, 10.4 is probably gonna be the place to take profits. If you're long from down here, if you're long from five cents, uh, or whatever this is, yeah, if you're long from five cents. You're gonna to want to take profits at ten cents. That's a two x. That's a it's a great trade in about a week, man. Good good job. Um, 
flip 10. Yeah, we'll open up. We'll open up 13. We'll open up 17. We'll open up higher. Let's look at some of these H4 and let's look at some daily trends. Okay, you've cleared the daily 100. No problem. Yeah, daily 200 is in the cards. Um, now it just depends how it occurs, right? Like, do we get rejected by ten dollars here? This is this is reminds me of CRV from last week. Go and watch CRV. CRV. I talked about something similar. How I was late to the trade and I don't want to bid no man's land. So this coin is again no man's land for me and not not a trade I want to take either. You know, break above here, SFP this. I'll take a short or or trade all the way back down into daily one hundred. Uh, confluent with the H four two hundred EMA, kind of like we just talked about that perfect setup. On uni let's say this comes all the way back down and, and trades back into the daily 100 confluent with the h4 200 dma confluent with the breaker setup boom that is an amazing long you take that long and you ride that all the way to the the, the daily 200 that's what i would be looking for set alerts in fact i'll do it right now i'll do it live right now i'll, I'll put i'll put an alert in right here and we'll do it on the one hour and we'll label this bid create Boom. All right, guys. So that is going to be. Let's actually move this over here. Boom. Boom. All right. So that's going to be how I want to bid HTR. I'll probably do some some research on what this coin is, but that's going to be that. That's going to be it for me on that one. Um, XLM, same strategy. Look at how it held the H4 200 EMA. This is confident with this breaker right here. This is your point of breakdown. It, it SR flipped that. We got rejected by the daily 100. We're flipping that. The next target is going to be, once again, the pre FTX collapse top confluent with the H with the daily 200 EMA. Same situation for XLM. I, I'm not going to go into it further. Go back and re see some of these other coins. It's the same setup. Ada is going to be the same setup. Ada actually has a really high time frame level that I want to work with. Um, look at this. This is your um, weekly demand, weekly demand. And let me get rid of this guy right here. Here is a significant swing low. So we almost tapped that one. Um, this was support, right? 39 cents was support, flipped to resistance. We traded all the way down to 20 cents. We're bouncing all the way down to 39 cents. Again, I don't really care about ADA fundamentals, probably a coin that I want to pick up for the next bull market because it has a cult following and they're probably going to bid it and Charles is going to pump it and whatever. So for me, I want to accumulate it around 22. Um, if we, if we clear this, right, if we clear this, okay, this is the weekly 100, 200, let's go to the daily. If we clear the daily, we accept back into this range. Here was our prior range. Here's your low. Here's your high. We accept back into this range, right? I'll probably I'll probably bite the bullet and just start picking up spot down here, right? And I'll look at this entire thing as a deviation of that range. That is one way to high time frame trade uh, ADA on a low time frame. Same techniques I've said for the past uh, hour in this one. Watch the H4 trends, the daily 100, 200. Look for some HRs. Look for your uh, breaker setup. So you got the breaker setup right here. Defended the daily 100. Probably gets, real talk, probably gets rejected at 42. Confluent with these highs. Confluent with the daily 200. That's not a bad place to look for a short. I don't know who's going to be chasing Cardano at 42 cents. I don't know why it'd be so ravenously bought at 42 cents after basically a 2x. So this is probably going to be a place to short. Probably one of the coins that I'll be looking for short exposure on uh, when we get a risk off phase. Okay. XRP. XRP has some news regarding um, SEC case, right? I believe. Um, XRP has been range bound. Uh, I've been looking at this as my range high, range low. We can use a mid range. This is not going to be one that I'm going to be using trending asset strategies on. This is again, still going to be range bound strats for me. It hasn't broken out of that long accumulation range that it's been in the entire bear market. It's sitting right around mid range. Actually take log off, right? Boom. You're right around mid range. You're right at mid range. You're at the daily 200 EMA. Um, if you really, really bullish on, uh, on XRP, maybe you get a push up into 45 and whatnot but this is not a coin that I want to trade. If you caught this wick, now someone in Discord did. I know someone in Discord pointed this out the day that it occurred. Someone said there's a liquidity sweep on XRP. They pointed this out and they got long XRP and I think they've been riding XRP longs. Uh, if you're watching this video and you're the guy who did that, GG's to you, bro. Great, great, great trade. 
Um, but it's at mid range right now, not actionable for me, uh, not something I'm interested in trading in. Um, this is a news trade. If you're a news if you're a news trader and you're quick to the news and you can and you can trade news, um, good luck to you. Uh, this is your market. This is not my market. This is not one that I'm going to give actionable insights on. Chili's. My baby, my baby. Oh, look what they've done to you, Chili's. <laughs> so Chili's all the way back down into the summer accumulation range, bouncing from there, has not yet tagged the daily 100, the daily 200. It's coming into a big area of supply. So let's look at that now. Big area of supply. Not not a location I want along. I think there's a narrative. Someone mentioned that there's a narrative for Chili's. This is not a place I want along. This is not a place I want along because what I believe could occur, what I believe could occur is a one day pump to 15 and then a full retracement. That's what I think could occur. What I would like to see is probably more ranging, more ranging, allow these moving indicators, allow the daily 100, 200 to come down. Then we SR flip this level. Then we push upwards. That's kind of how I'd trade Chili's. I think it has a narrative. There's some main net thing launching coming soon. If that, if you have a confluence with a good setup on high time frame with some price action, some moving indicators, and the narrative, mention it again. I'll I'll put it in the next watch list. We'll cover this again next week. We'll see what happened with Chili's. But Chili's for me is not, you know, compared to the other other setups, the other coins that I've talked about. I don't think Chili's has an advantage over them, and I think you're better off bidding some other coins. Okay. RLC, RLC, RLC. We talked about this last week. I did a video on this. I swear I did a video on RLC. That's why I have this already marked out. That's why I already have RLC marked out. Oh man, this, oh yeah, I did a video on this. Probably just a quick one, two minute video in Discord. This looks phenomenal. This is a really, really good chart. This, <laughs> this is a good, this is a bullish as hell chart. This is a bullish as hell chart. This is going to go to $2.60. This is going to make its way up to $2.60. This is in bullish market structure. This consolidated and rejected the day. Someone else dealt with this. Some other traders dealt with this and now we get to now we get to enjoy the fruits of their 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 labor. You've taken a significant SR level at 147, which was resistance for months. You've broken above it. You put a demand block right underneath it. You traded above. You found support at 147 and you pushed higher. You're trading well above your moving averages. You're trading well above your H4 200 EMA. You've got the trend on your side. You've got everything on your side. I think this is an AI coin. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Tell me something about uh, uh, RLC. I don't know what the narrative for RLC is, but this looks phenomenal. And if there's a broad market correction, I'm going to be bidding 146 and 125. I'm not going to care that, oh, this, you know, this was your range high and, and we, we deviated and we're back in here. No, 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 no. This is a trending asset. Look at how, look at the respect that it's shown for the daily 100. Look at the respect that it's shown for the daily 200. You use those as your actionable signals on this coin. This is utmost respect. One of the most, uh, one of the cleanest uh, daily 100, daily 200 coins I've seen. I believe that if you come all the way down into this daily one, this is a no-brainer long. Look, you even have a massive wick right here. Take out that wick, take out the liquidity, trade in these daily 100, 200s, bid this, that'll take you to 260. That that's that's an incredible trade if we so if we get it, if we don't get it, the only opportunity, the only option you have is to continue bidding the H4 trend, which is what they did this morning. Bid the H4 trend, your invalidation is loss of the trend. Look for clean SRs. Look at how nicely this was defended at 148. Um, if we come all the way down to 148 again, this is going to be a place that I buy buy some. I'll probably buy spot on this one, to be honest. I'll probably buy some spot on this one because I don't want to shake out a good high time frame trade using leverage and funding and, and all that crap. So I'll probably just pick up some spot around 148. A dream scenario is going to be 130. In fact, like in other coins, I'm going to set an alert for myself to remind myself if we get pullbacks. So let's set an alert here. Let's set an alert here. Boom. Okay, that's going to be RLC done. Great coin. Thank you to whoever mentioned it. Ave. Ave. Ave is trading very cleanly. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Ave looks great. Ave is coming into a point of supply. I think it's traded all the way back. It's pretty much traded all the way back into its FTX top. Um, 
SR wise, very clean level here on the daily, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. This looks like this looks like Uniswap. This looks like Uniswap. This is the same chart as Uniswap. This is the same chart as Uniswap. You have these highs, you have a deviation over the highs, you have your FTX collapse, you have your reaccumulation, you got a push back into it. I think you've, you're finding selling pressure. Look at this daily wicks. You're finding a lot of selling pressure in this area. Okay, now let's pull up some trends. Um, you're, yeah, you're consolidating above the, this is a literally Uniswap. This is literally Uniswap. It's doing the same thing. Okay, so for me, uh, I think you bid down here. I think you're patient on this one. I think you bid down here. I think the only other way, like I said, the same thing is if you clear all these highs out, right? You clear all these highs out, you set, you, you put in a daily higher high, and then you could bid a pullback in here. If you're using the uh, the EMA strategies, right? You, you would be confluent of the daily 100, the daily 200, the daily H4. That's where you would bid. If it loses all three of those, well, that's your invalidation. At least you have a very, very clean high time frame trade. You'd be looking for um, a clearance of these highs. But if you're looking at this as a range, and I can get rid of some of this stuff, or maybe I'll just find another chart. Let's pull up this chart. Uh, you can look at it like this. Something like that is your range. Yeah, that's pretty clean. Okay, that's clean enough. There's your high. Here's a bunch of supply. Here's that level we were talking about. Let's mark out a mid-range on Ave respecting the mid-range h4 okay i want to pull back on ave i don't want to do business here again if you want to do business here use the h4 strat i don't want to do business here uh ave i think is a good fundamentally sound coin they have a stable coin coming out don't they that w okay so they have they have a catalyst they have a catalyst a catalyst coin is probably going to not going to give you the pullback that you want you're probably not going to get this guy but if you do you bid that uh obviously and let's let's set some alerts let's set some alerts let's do that again let's put an alert here boom created okay back to the daily um yeah so just like treat it treat it just like uniswap if you get a higher high you 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 you, you long the pullback if you don't get the higher high you long that uh you long down here at the breaker the confluence of the daily 100 the daily uh the h4 200 ema something like that it's coming up on a lot of resistance resistance can get blasted through in a strong market it has a narrative with the stable coin it could continue to push higher if it pushes higher then i'll be looking to buy the next correction on a potential higher low Okay, okay, okay. We've done a lot of stuff. We're almost done. Link, Link, Samuel, if you're listening, I didn't forget about you, buddy. We're getting to Link. All right. Link, very clean, very clean bid right here. Um, I've been following Link for a very long time. And honestly, I thought this was going to break down. But if you look at this on a very high time frame perspective, this all looks like accumulation. Um, I thought the range was going to be lost. And I was looking for something like this to clear these levels, reclaim, boom, 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 as it's drawn out. We held the level. So if you're going to help, if you're going to hold the lows and you're going to deviate the lows, the natural place to go is the highs. So I think that link moves its way up to 955 over the course of days or weeks, however long it may take. If we're using our same strats, the link was rejected by the daily 200. I expect it once again to get rejected by the daily 200 around 760. 760 is confluent with this high. So you've got confluence with um, you, this was the staking narrative rally. So this was the staking narrative rally. I actually longed the hell out of link on this on this right here. I sold somewhere in this consolidation. And so now I believe link has upside target upside room into 760 why are we finding resistance right here on multiple weeks i would say probably because there is this supply block there's this supply block right here so you've got supply you've got h uh, you've got daily 200 right rejecting so what link could do and i think this would be extremely bullish if link just does this if link just does this and just keeps trading in here then when you clear this, it ju it's just going to chad. It's going to absolutely chad 
there this is inefficiency this is this is crap um none of this matters anymore this has all been cleaned out this is a range this is your high to work with and that high this this probably coincides with mid-range you don't need to draw it you can see it with your eyes if this consolidates right here extremely bullish if this consolidates right here i'll just buy I'll just buy a big spot bag and I'll ride it to, to, to 955. That's what I think is going to happen on Link. I don't think it has a narrative. I don't think it has anything going for it at the moment that I'm aware of. So it's going to be a laggard. It's going to be something that people continue to rotate into. Make money elsewhere, rotate into Link. Make money elsewhere, rotate into Link. And that's why I think you're going to have that consolidated pattern here. And then if it breaks out, it's going to break out very strong. It's going to be violent. I think it'll be moving very quickly. You'll get a lot of traders trading it. Maybe volatile, but it probably makes its way back up to 960 okay fet i think this is another ai coin looks phenomenal it's cleared all its daily oh my god oh my god why have i not been trading fet what is wrong with you guys why didn't you mention this last week i'm just kidding i'm just kidding uh fet 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 okay there's your swing high uh, I've marked out this swing high on a lot of coins, um, Litecoin, a bunch of coins. This was this was a very significant swing high in May as Bitcoin was holding 28K and a lot of altcoins were collapsing. I think Bitcoin went on a Bitcoin dominance rally. That's where a lot of altcoins had this. They had this swing high and a big sell off. Um, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so you're SFPing those levels right now. Uh, this is a lot of supply right here. FET actually might be, I don't want to say that. It might be topped. It, it might be topped. It might be topped. It might be topped. I don't know. I don't know. The, from a price action perspective, so you've cleared these by a mile, by a mile. If, if you got in on this daily 100, daily 200 consolidation, wow, what a trade that you got into if you were paying attention to this. All the way up to, all the way up to 30 cents. Um, this is supply right here. This is going to be hard to trade above. This is a significant swing high. Um, you're seeing multiple days. So we've had like five, six days trading above here. Every time we get close to that, we're getting rejected. The way that you have to play continuation, I won't be longing this. I'll either one of two things, big pullback all the way down to like 14 cents, big 50% pullback. Maybe not even that far. Maybe coincides with this level right here. And you have a, you have a demand block right there. You, we have... We have demand block, we have this liquidity. So maybe around 18 cents. I'd be looking for a pullback to around 18 cents to buy FET. Um, I think the AI narrative, since it's strong, strong stay strong. We'll just keep making up narratives for it. If that's what we want to do, if that's our new thing, if you know it's not DeFi, it's not this, now it's going to be AI coins, so be it. We'll, we'll, we'll buy the narrative. We'll, we'll submit to the narrative. But around 18 cents is probably the pullback I'll be looking for on, on FET. Or if I have to break out trade this, I'd be looking for a candle to do that. You do this. Make a candle like this without me. Strong daily candle. Don't wick. Close way above here. And then I'll buy whatever pullback you give me. And then we can aim for we can aim for 50 cents. But yeah, this is not an area that I want to buy FET, even though this coin looks incredible. And then lastly, DYDX. DYDX reminds me a lot about F. X S. Sorry, I have to say it slowly because I mess up my words all the time with slight dyslexia. Um, okay, uh, it's not even dyslexia. There's another word for it. But anyways, um, so uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, D Y D X is at mid range. It's done the H four. 200 daily 100 consolidation. It's broken above it. It's currently tagging a breaker. Right, so the tagging a supply zone, a swing high, a swing high zone, right? So we're trying to put in a higher high. We're being rejected four days in a row. I wouldn't be surprised if this one closes a wick as well. Um, this may be so okay. Here, two ways, two ways to play this. Either it goes up like this, and then we bid the pullback, we defend gray, and then we push it higher. That's one way. The second way, it pulls all the way back into these these moving averages, and we defend and we push higher. Buying here is tough. Buying here is tough unless DYDX has a narrative going for it. I think there's an unlock happening. And if you see what happened to Magic, so Magic has this unreal supply unlock coming into the market. Look what Magic's doing. It's going absolutely insane. It's it's no non like nonsense. Just everyone's pumping it so that you know the people who got in who have locked up Magic can comfortably dump onto the market. Maybe DYDX is doing the same thing. It's possible that DYDX is doing the exact same thing. 
So maybe people are just speculatively buying positions in DYDX at the moment, and they're looking for DYDX to do something like magic, but I will tell you that it looks like early days FXS to me, and flipping this daily 200 whenever it comes is very bullish. I would say, I would say if you flip this daily 200, range high doesn't matter. This, this doesn't matter. You're going to move all the way up into this supply zone around three something. That's what I think is going to happen with DYDX. These are the right conditions for it. Um, so yeah, uh, there's multiple ways to be able to get into this H4 trends, breakers, um, look for pullbacks into these high time frame moving averages, um, defend the gray box. If we get a push up above it, you can also use uh, the daily 200 if you miss this entire move and 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 we trade above the daily 200. You can look at you can look at buying or longing the daily 200 and daily closes below it could be your signal to get out. You could even wait for this whole thing to break out. You could wait. Look look at FXX. It, it gave you that it gave you that breakout play. Um, I don't know who, who. Not many people took this. I took this because it's 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 a brainless long to me. You've broken out of the range. You've traded well above it. When you tag the range, it's an easy long. Uh, I long this. I think a lot of people long this. And I think if you want to wait for like hours and days and weeks of, you know, confirmation on DYDX, you could even take that long on DYDX when it presents itself. So guys, okay. We did a lot of coins. <laughs> we did a lot of coins. I can't believe I've been talking for an hour and 15 minutes. If there's even a single one of you that watched this entire video, please leave me a comment below. I want to know who you are. Um, I want to give you a special shout out in the next video, um, cause that's super cool. That's super cool that there's people out here wanting to learn and absorb information. And, you know, I have some wisdom and knowledge to offer, but I'm still learning myself. Um, always keep that in mind. We're all students in this game. We're all students. No one has mastered trading. No one has mastered markets. No one knows all the answers to everything. Everyone is just building a system that allows them to maximize their reward and minimize their risk. That is the name of the game. This is a video game. It's going to take multiple reps, multiple reps, multiple years, multiple weeks, months, reps, thousands of trades to get good at this game. So just keep trading. Keep trading, keep clicking. If the risk is too big, make a small portfolio, make a $100 portfolio, make a $50 portfolio, whatever you whatever you don't care about. Make a portfolio and trade and treat it like a video game and see how you can get a high score. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Be sure to check out be sure to check out my Twitter and Discord link in the description box below as well as Bybit. Sign up using my ref link. Ref link, you'll get free spot trades for a little bit and you'll get some sign up bonuses. The link will be in the description box below. Check those things out, boys. Talk to you in the next week. Bye.